questions. So that way we will be posting it up on our YouTube page. We'll have the link in Class Dojo as well. So if you want to watch us again, or if we have some families that weren't able to join us, that way they can get the same information. Um, as we work our way through our presentation today, the chat box is open. So if you would like to put anything in chat, but we'll have time at the end of the presentation to do questions and answers at that time too. So either way, we'll make sure that we get to any questions you have. So thank you so much. And I see we're good at our tools. I see a thumbs up on someone. So thanks so much for joining us today. I am Mrs. Sitaro. I'm the principal here at Ridgelawn School. And we also have Ms. Kazmarek, who will be doing the other half of the presentation too. So welcome to everyone. So good to see everyone. Thank you for joining us. So our presentation today is about our NWEA map. NWE map, just to get, give you a little bit of background if you're not familiar with it, it is an online assessment that we've been using in our district for years. Our junior high has used it for a super long time, back to the days when Ms. Kazmarek was an eighth grade and sixth grade teacher over at the junior high. So it is an adaptive assessment program that we've been using over the years. And typically we use it two to three times a year. Um, to give us some information on our students. The information is gathered in reading and in math, so in both of those areas. Um, typically, we've done it twice a year, sometimes even three times a year. We would give the NWEA map assessment in the fall to get a baseline where our students are starting the grade year. And it also would help us to compare how they ended the year as well. Um, then we would take it again in the winter and at times we've taken in the spring as well too. So we've had three different benchmarks to give us some information. Why do we call it MAP? It has nothing to do with geography. It actually stands for the measure of academic progress. That's where the MAP test comes in. Most of the times that it's not even talked about. Our kids probably don't even realize that too. So the way that this online test works is the students sit down in front of a computer and they are given questions. As they answer those questions, if they get it right, the questions start to get harder. As they get it incorrect, the questions drop down. So that's why it's called an adaptive test. It realizes how the students are answering and it scales up or it scales down to provide the next set of questions. Why do we use this? The MAP test gives us really good information. It gives us information about the students, how they're doing today in the areas of reading and in math, but it also measures their growth over time. We have a snapshot here. If, if you're a family that's been with us for some time, you may have gotten these reports and they grow over time. For this particular student, the math is on top the language arts reading is on the bottom and the blue would show how the student performed on that particular test that time. And then you see the other two colors. One is for the district and one is for the mean, which is how students nationally progress. So the students are compared themselves to themselves. We look at them to the school and the district, but also how do they compare to students across the country that are taking the same test? So you can see this student and, and math has done well, has almost consistently been above the district and the national average and actually a pretty good student in the area of reading as well. The scores look a little crazy on the right hand side. When they do this test, they get measured in something called a RIT. Now a RIT, it's not really a grade level test, it spans so kids can go from kindergarten questions all the way up to seventh grade questions if they keep proceeding. So it does go up and down. But on the right hand side where it says that percentile range, that really gives you an idea how the students perform compared to other students. If you perform at the 70th percentile, that means you did as well or better than 70 other students in a range of 100. So it really gives you a sense of how that child is performing. And it gives the teachers here great information about not only are they, how are they doing in math, but how are they doing in sub areas of math, such as geometry, 
number sense algebra. So that way they get more specific information on where their strengths are and where they need to grow. Now, when we look at growth, the, the next important graphics are super important for all of us to keep in mind. When we measure growth, it's where a child is at now. They cannot pass this test. They cannot fail this test. Test. It's a measure of where they're at in this moment of time and then where they'll be at next time. So this isn't a pass or fail test. We don't get a grade on this. It doesn't affect the report card. It's more of a tool for us to understand where the students are at and a tool to use with our students so that way they can understand where they're at and they can set their own goals. A lot of our goal setting is typically done at the beginning of the year, so we didn't have this to guide us. We'd like to be able to have this information moving forward. On this particular test, kids are going to get things wrong. And that is totally okay. Actually, about half of the questions that they come across, they may get wrong. Because again, the questions are going to get harder as the tests or as they do well. So we do ask if your children are in a situation where they are going to be taking them at home, do not help them with the test. That will give us really skewed results and will not, not really provide any useful information. Back in the spring, we actually had um, some of our students taking some placement tests on our one program called MobyMax, and some students did get some extra help at home. Well, it started assigning them assignments that were way too hard for them, so it really wasn't productive. So we really, really want to see what the students know on their own. And with this, these results are going to be able to give our teachers some very valuable information about what they're ready to learn and what they need some support on moving forward. Okay, now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty of some of this. So for our families on the call that have students in kindergarten through second grade, again, we're doing reading and math for those age groups as well as third through fifth. It takes about 30 minutes for a test, sometimes a little bit more, sometimes a little bit less, the difference with our kindergarten through second grade test, it's read aloud to those students. So because we really want to test their, their um, information that they know and not always their strict reading ability, the math test and the reading test is read to the students. They also, and we, we do need our students, you'll see the, the headphones there, we do want them to be wearing headphones. There are drop and drag features, there are multiple choice features, so they are usually working whether it's using their keyboard or using their touchpad to be moving things around. And for our kindergarten through second grade students, we do not have a kinder or a calculator function for this. So this is just what they know on their own. So the main difference though with kindergarten through second grade is that read aloud portion. Our third through fifth graders. Reading and math as well, it usually takes them a little bit longer, 45 minutes to an hour on average. And they also have drop and drag and multiple choice. Test and calculator may pop up during the test itself. At that time, that lets the students know you can use that tool for this part of the test. However, they're not allowed to use an outside calculator for other portions of the test. So it's only when it does pop up on the screen. Our third and fifth graders also have some testing tools available, which we'll show you later on in the presentation. So that way you can be a bit, or familiar with them as well. There's highlighters, there's line readers, there's a notepad, things of that nature if they need it during the test. The key part through third through fifth grade is they do read this on their own. So there is not that read aloud portion of it that K through two does get. Okay, Ms. Kazmierik, handing it over to you. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Sitaro. So the next portion we're gonna talk about, um, there's some options for our parents moving forward. So um, as we had mentioned, there are, since we have our remote parents with us, a majority of you are remote parents, I do see some of our in-person, so I'm glad you're joining us for the background on the test. For our remote parents, there's really two options, especially for our three through fifth families to decide upon. 
So I just want you to keep some of those things in mind. We're gonna talk about kind of the pros and cons of each of those options. And then following this presentation, we'll share out a survey with everybody. So that way you can input whatever option you would like for your students. So first we're gonna ask that our students for third through fifth grade, that there's gonna be an option where those students can test remotely. So the teachers will start a Zoom session with your students, they'll join with their classroom teachers and they would proctor the test. The other option would be to bring the students in person to test here. We'll get into some more specifics on how each of those would look. And that option is for K through five. So we'll get into some more details as we're going with how those will look. But just keep in mind that those are your two choices to decide it upon the end of the presentation, whether you would choose to have your students take the test at home remotely if they're a third through fifth grader, or if you'd like to bring them in person safely, social distance, following all of our safety procedures, of course, to have them test in person. So this is something that we would have all of the students do prior to testing. And it really is a device check for our Chromebooks that we have handed out to everyone. The Chromebooks have definitely had some more wear and tear than what they're typically used to over the years. They're devices that were made to just kind of be passed out, collected, put back in the carts. And we really are seeing the kids turn these devices into their own. They're using them in such creative ways, but that also puts some strain and extra programs and memory on the Chromebooks that hasn't been there in the past. So one thing that we're gonna ask is first, everyone will complete the survey, but then following that and prior to the test, the most important things that you can do to help us at home is going to be to restart those computers and also make sure that you charge the Chromebook for testing. Restarting the computer, we've had a handful of them come back into us recently that haven't been restarted properly. And I think it's just the generation we're in, the students close the screen and just think that that turns the computer off. Um, but unfortunately that does not push through the updates that the computers need to be able to run the map testing for them. So they would go to the bottom right hand corner where the clock is on their Chromebooks. They'd click that and then there's a shutdown button there on their Chromebooks where they'd shut down, power the computer back on, and that would allow any updates that are pending to automatically push through. The teachers are also doing this with the classes when they have them on, but we'd ask that the parents make sure that it's done prior to testing as well, just to be sure. And then again, make sure they're charged. So whether they're coming in person to test or testing at home, we don't have any hiccups where the computer might die in them mid test and then they get kicked out since it is an online program. The other thing is the workstation diagnostic check. This is really that piece to make sure that everything the computer needs so that way there's not technical issues while the student's testing, um, that it runs smoothly. Otherwise the test could not have questions load, they could get kicked off and then back in and then kicked off and back in. And that really doesn't make for a good testing environment for the students. It could be frustrating for them. So we're gonna ask that we do this device check. It's as simple as clicking this link. Again, this is something that the teacher's doing with all of them. And it's actually pretty interesting. You can see even when I click the link myself, right now it's going through the diagnostic check. It's running, I'm also running Zoom. So you can see that it's going through all the different settings. My device has passed, which is actually pretty funny because yesterday when I took that screenshot, my device didn't pass, which is why we are asking the parents to do this more than once. I did not pass for the resolution here, which you can see in my screenshot. I failed the resolution test. Oh, this is Mrs. Sitaros here, down here, because I wasn't plugged into the device I'm using right now, so it changed the resolution. So even in a 24-hour period for me, it changed where I had failed yesterday and I would pass now. So we're gonna ask the teachers to do it, but then parents to do it so we can just guarantee that they're ready to go. The next important thing, especially for our third through fifth grade testers is going to be if our parents are choosing to have them test remotely. We really decided that this was an option only for our third through fifth grade families because the K to two test when it reads aloud puts a lot more demand on the internet. And as we know, Zoom and the different internet things and all of the remote learnings are not always the most reliable. And so it really did, we tried some Wi-Fi and hotspots and different things with the K-2 test and doing it remotely, we thought would be really frustrating for the students that we would not get accurate, accurate assessment because it was hard unless the Wi-Fi was perfect at all times. 
So we're only offering remote testing for our third through fifth grade because it does not have that audio component. So it does make it much smoother for the students to take the test if you choose to have them do it remotely. So on the testing date, we're gonna ask that all of our families provide a nice quiet place for the students to test. Um, this even more so than on a normal remote day. We really want them to be able to focus, no TVs on in the background, no music in the background. And that way they can really you know, concentrate on the test and the teachers will be able to get an accurate score that way. We also ask that your children are wearing headphones and have a scratch paper and pencil available. So the headphones, even for the three through five, it's not reading aloud to them, but that just helps to kind of distract from any background noise that would be going in. That's something that even our teachers put into place while they're here taking the test. It's just good practice for them so they can really focus in. And the scratch paper and pencil, they're allowed to use for the reading and the math test. So if the calculator doesn't pop up for them, they still have that scratch paper where they can work on the math problems. And for reading, they're allowed to take notes and jot down things if they're reading longer passages. The other thing will to be on time because the teachers are gonna start in Zoom, but then once the students are testing, they're gonna close that Zoom session and monitor the students using GoGuardian. This will put less strain on the computers so they won't be so glitchy and they'll be able to have a successful test without getting kicked off like they would if Zoom is running in the background, just because Zoom puts so much demand on the Chromebooks. So we're gonna ask that they're on time so they can start and the teacher can proctor, give them all the directions, make sure that they understand before they have the students take the test and then the teachers will monitor them question by question on their own devices. Also, it's important to be on time so that way you can follow or they can follow all of the teacher's directions that are given for the test. And we're gonna ask again that the parents do not provide any hints or assistance to their students. I can say as a classroom teacher who used to use the map data in my classroom a lot to help with instruction, it's really important to get the information on what the students can do to help plan lessons moving forward. What do they need? What can I support? Where can we move on? Because they've already mastered those pieces. So we are gonna ask not to provide any assistance with the students as they're testing. And if there are any technical difficulties to contact the teacher immediately, so that way we can troubleshoot it and get them back in. We really don't want them to frustrate out when they're in this testing environment. We wanna keep all of that good flow going for them. So here's what the schedule would look like if you're choosing to have your students take the remote test at home. They would test with their classroom teachers via Zoom is how they would start. It's going to be on Wednesday, February 10th and Thursday, February 11th. They'll start with the reading and then move on to math. That's the same practice they've always followed. So they're very familiar if they've tested with us before. And they will be testing in the afternoon after the um, lunch break. The reason we're doing that is because they have their special area classes in the morning. A lot of additional services are provided in the morning, EL classes. So this way it can be an uninterrupted space of time where they can really just focus on taking that reading and math test. So these will be for the students that are choosing to test at this time. If you are deciding to bring your student in person to test, there will be an alternative assignment that they could work on that the teachers will post. So they won't just be missing that time. They will have something to work on when they're doing that while the students are testing. And then same thing when the students that aren't testing come in person, there's kind of going to be that balance. So there will be material for them to do. And then the second option is what we'll talk at. You can see Eddie's very excited about the second option. He wants to see the students in the building. So this is the one that we would really recommend for our families if it's possible. So it would be in testing, in person testing for our families that are kindergarten through fifth grade. So on the testing date, you would arrive to Ridgelawn School and we'd have you enter into the gym door just like you do when we have our material pickups. So that way it's not with the other students. It's not like they would be going down to a classroom. We wouldn't have to worry about any like cross-contamination or sitting in another student's desk. They would be in a space that was theirs for that time where we would proctor the test for them. We also are gonna ask that they bring in their charged Chromebook with them and headphones. Again, that way they're using their devices, their headphones, we can have them in in their safe space and keep our students socially distanced and they'll take the test in the gym, but still sitting at student desk so it's very comfortable for them. And I know this one looks like a lot. So this is how we will be proctoring the in-person testing for our students. And in the survey that you can 
submit, these will all be options for everyone. So you can see we have kindergarten all the way up through fifth grade, and we broke it up in some pretty strategic ways for you. So we're gonna start with our third, fourth, and fifth grade students on February 10th. That's the same day that the other classes are testing. So they could potentially test at the same time as the remote testing students if you chose to bring them in on these two dates. So you will have that as an option. So they would come here, take the test in person, while the families that are choosing to test remotely took it at home. That's for our third, fourth, and fifth grade only. And then on February 12th, when the other students, maybe they were absent or not feeling well or having technical difficulties with the test that day, that's their makeup day here. So our, we have two time options. If you're choosing to come in remote, you can either come in the morning between nine and 10 o'clock or in the afternoon again, between one and two o'clock. Monday is President's Day, so we have no school. So we don't need to worry about that for testing. And then Tuesday and Wednesday, we wanted to make sure that we gave some time to open it up for multiple grade levels. This way, if you have siblings and one's in kindergarten and one's in third, you can bring them in at the same time instead of having to bring them in on separate dates. So if that works better for you and you have students in multiple grade levels that you would like to come in person and test with us in the gym, you can sign up on that Tuesday or Wednesday at either nine o'clock to 10 o'clock or one o'clock to two o'clock. And then we'd end off with our testing session on that Thursday and Friday. And we're gonna keep that just for our primary students. So that way they have some time where it's just, just the primary students in the gym, um, you know, no big kids in there since they're coming in. Some of our students, especially kindergarten, it might be their first time, they're excited. So we want to make sure that we have that time for the primary students. So that would be, again, there's a morning and afternoon option on those days for our primary grades. We recommend that when you sign up, you sign up to back-to-back -back days. The first day would be reading. The second day would be math. However, we completely understand that schedules come up and that might not be an option. So if you need to schedule them and you need to pick you know, the 16th and the 18th for that to work for you, we're happy to accommodate. Um, In-person in testing, excuse me, will have limited space so that way we can maintain that social distance, keep everyone safe. Students will be wearing masks when they come in. So dates and times will be scheduled on that first come first serve basis. So we're gonna share out the survey as those survey results come in, we'll schedule, you'll get a confirmation of your time. And then once that time frame is full, we'll take that off the survey. So that way you know that that's no longer available and we would move on to a different time. So if you did pick a time and it's not available, we would reach out to you personally to be able to schedule something to accommodate you. But we are keeping that space limited just so we can keep everyone safe when we're in the gym. One other thing to note is if you really would like to have your person or your student come in for in-person testing and none of these dates, none of these times can accommodate your schedule, we ask that you please reach out to Mrs. Sotaro or myself on Dojo or give us a phone call and we will be happy to work out whatever we can to help, whether it be before school or after school, something so we can have the students come in and test in person if that is what you would like to do. So please reach out if you need to accommodate a different time. And I'm going to turn it back over to Mrs. Sitaro now and she'll walk you through exactly how the survey is going to look. Okay, with all that, take a breath, everybody. That was a lot of information. You don't have to memorize anything because we'll be sharing this whole presentation out with you. And we will also be actually walking you through the survey right now. Now, keep in mind, if your child is already an in-person student, you don't have to do anything. They will be with us already when they're in here on those two days that will all be taken care of. So you don't have to take the survey. However, if you choose to, we put a spot in there for you too. So I'm going to walk you through this survey as Ms. Kazmarek clicks us through. So you will have a link to go into one of our surveys. And you're going to see right here that it is a remote testing option. So you will need to populate in your email address and hit the next button. You will indicate what your student is right now. Are they an in-person student? If you hit in-person, it's actually gonna almost take you right out of the survey because you don't have to take it. Um, so our remote families, you would select remote and you would hit next. We ask for you to provide us some information, student's first name, their last name, and their grade level. 
once you go into the next page, you'll have an option of who your children, who your child's teacher is. Just please check your teacher. And then after that, you're indicating that you will bring my child to the school for remote testing. So you can go ahead and pick yes, and it'll bring you all those options. Now, if you pick no, it will just basically send you into an agreement that you're agreeing to follow all of our Ridgeline procedures in terms of testing and then you'll submit it and you'll be done with the survey. So if you're a remote parent that's opting to do it remotely with your teacher um, via Zoom and then via online, you would just indicate that. That just lets us know for planning purposes how you would like to go about. On the flip side, if you are opting to bring your child in person, you would indicate yes and press the next button. At this point, that chart that Ms. Kazmarek walked you through is now in a table format. You are going to select at least two dates. And the reason why we said at least two dates, if it does happen to fill up and you have an additional date selected, we would use that as your additional preference. We will go with the first two that you pick. So if there's two you really want, just pick those two. And if they happen to fill up, we will come back to you. And then as soon as you press that, you could hit the submit button and that's all you need to do, that will send that to us. Once we have our surveys completed, we are gonna start working through those surveys so that we, way we can schedule that. We will be reaching out to give you confirmation of your days and times and reminders of procedures. So it's really just that simple. You'll just click through to let us know what you would like to do, what are your preferred days, and we will take it from there. We do ask that you complete this survey by this Friday at noon, so that way it gives us time to process that information. Because if you keep in mind our very first day of um, in-person testing, as well as remote student testing is next Wednesday, February 10th. So that'll allow us several days to be able to put all of our ducks in a row and then get back to you with that. So the next thing we wanted to share out with everyone is just some resources. Again, as Mrs. Sitaro stated, we will share this presentation with everyone. So you have links and can go through all of these if you'd like. There are some really nice videos that you can do at home and watch with your students. So they have a little bit more familiar, familiarity with it, especially if they're new to us. Um, if they're returning students, they are definitely familiar with MAP as they've done it before. And there's also some practice tests that you can do as well. So there's two separate links here. You have our K-2 student resource link. And the three to five least resource link is very similar as well. But here you can actually sign up and take the practice test with your students if you'd like, especially with our K-2 students that are coming, well, all of them, if you choose, would be coming in person. You could do this at home with them so they're familiar. So when they get here, they're comfortable, they're confident and ready to go when they come in to take the MAC test with us. So you just click practice test. And you will see the username is grow and the password is grow. So when they open the practice test itself, that's what they would type in here. Grow, grow. And then you would select whatever their information was. So kindergarten, whether you wanted them to take the reading or the math test, we're gonna have it taken in English. And then we'll click the blue arrow, that blue that's arrow. The uppercase letters to the lowercase letters is how they navigate everything through MAP. And there you can see a nice example of how it would read aloud. You have our speech button here. We have the volume button and the students will be dragging and dropping and manipulating the computer. So it's always a good idea just to practice with them prior to the test. Again, the teachers with our in-person students are doing this. The remote teachers will also be talking about MAP with their students. So if you're choosing for your students to come in, it's not gonna be the first time they're hearing about it. Our remote teachers will be talking with the students, we'll be showing them the examples and getting them familiar and comfortable, but we wanted to give you that option as well. So you can see in the K-2 section as well, they have some ideas that you can follow to get ready for the test. So it's a video that will pop up that you can watch to give you a little bit more background. 
I'm going to stop that before it starts talking over us, though. And there's also a what about this test. So there's another video that will give you some more information, some more background. It's a nice graphics that you can watch with your kids while you're at home if they have any questions. So just a little heads up, a warm up, if you will, of what's going to come for them for the map testing. The three through five one has one extra feature. So everything else is the same, but this explore tools is really important for our three to five students, especially if they were in second grade and now we have third grade students, because this is something that would be brand new to them on map testing this year. So the K to two does the read aloud, but the three to five now has these extra features that the students can use while they're taking the test. So they can highlight as they're taking the test themselves and it'll explain to them how to use the highlighter. It'll show them how to use the calculator and the ruler, how to take notes while they're reading if they want to use the notepad and type in notes if they don't choose to use the scratch paper. So there's a lot of different features that they can use um, knowing as a classroom teacher, one of the things that my students loved was this plus and minus sign. You will see for the math test and some of the reading tests, especially our older grade levels, when they have longer passages, that where they can um, maximize this text that's in there. Or if it's a chart that they need to read maximizing, the students are great at using it as soon as they know that that's an available feature because the Chromebook screens aren't huge. So having that as an option to really zoom in look at the graphics, read charts, and be confident about the answers they're selecting. I feel like that's a really beneficial tool that a lot of our students have used in the past. And then last, we just have our workstation diagnostic here that's very familiar. We showed you how to use that. So we just put the link in there for you as well if you want to do that test while you're at home. So what our goal today was a couple different things. Number one, to give you the why behind we're in a pandemic. Why are we taking these steps to, to schedule this online testing? Well, we do think that this is a very valuable piece of information that we will get back. Um, so that, that's one piece of it. The students are familiar with this test. And if this is new to them, we wanted to give you that background information so that way you can feel confident as a parent as well if you're having conversations with your student about it. So we, we wanted to explain that part we wanted to talk to you about the options that you have as a parent and how you can ready yourself with that information to make an informed decision when it comes to the survey. So those were our real goals in, in doing that. So we do hope that we gave you a lot of information and we just really wanted to pause what we had to say right now to open it up to our families that are on the call whether you would like to put something into the chat box to ask questions or if you would prefer to just go ahead and raise your hand or go ahead and unmute yourself um, to ask us anything that, that came to mind during this. I see Adam's mom. I actually <laughs> saw your hand. So go ahead and unmute yourself. How can we help you? Yes, please. So as we know, Adam is in person actually, but now he's uh, quarantining until the 16th of, the, of this month. So I'm a little confused. How, how are we going to do it? Sure. That, that's a great question. And that, that really falls into when we just have students absent. Adam will be back. Our period for map testing goes through the end of the month. So mm -hmm. we will be able to catch him up when he's back here in school. So that way he can just take it with us and you don't have to worry about anything on your end. Perfect. Thank you so much. <laughs> A that, that's a great question. And some of you may have the same question. Oh, my child's going to be absent on that day because I have a dentist appointment or things like that. That's totally typical for us. We're used to the makeup pieces. So thank you for asking that. Thank you so much. Go ahead. I see a dad with your hand up. Go ahead and ask away. Yeah, how you doing? I'm just uh, ask you a question because I have three kids, which is a kindergarten and a third grade and a fourth grade. Can I bring them all one time? You sure can. You'll be looking at those dates that allow for both K through K through five, which would be um, February 16th and 17th. Okay. Those would be the two days that we're opening up to all grade levels. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you sign up for those two days. 
I got you. Okay, thank Again, you. Again, if those days don't work for your schedule and you cannot make it for on the 16th or 17th, just please reach out to us with those students and times that would work and we can try to figure something out. Okay, thank you so much. And if Mrs. Yarbrough? Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Um, so my question is, so my child hasn't been back in school since March and her mask wearing skills are not the best. So I want to know how many proctors would be in the gym watching students, because I just know a lot of our babies who are not wearing masks and been home in a long time, those masks are going to slip, they're going to fall. So I just want to know who's going to be watching that and proctoring the test at the same time. Super question. Well, the number is going to really depend on how many kids we have coming in that day. Mm -hmm. You know, obviously, if we only have a handful of kids, our numbers are going to go down. Uh, Ms. Kazmarek and I are going to be available as long as, and Mrs. Arginio is going to be available, and some of our subs or teachers that are off at that time will be available. So we will have a number of uh, staff in there. Our numbers will go up as our students go up. So if we only have a handful, there, there's definitely going to be Ms. Kazmarek, Mrs. Sitaro, Ms. Kazmarek, Mrs. Sitaro, as well as Ms. Arginio, who will all be scheduled to be in there at a minimum. Yes. Thank you. For we, are, we will make sure that those desks again, because we understand that the masks can slip and they're focused on the test. All desks are going to be well over six feet apart. So if there's a little, they're still safe. They're still socially distanced. There's still plenty of room. Um, and so that way, even if there is a little slip, there'll be a nice little reminder, but not where it would be a distraction for anyone else in the gym that's taking the test. They'll have that. That's another reason for the headphones and things. So there'll definitely be eyes on all of our students in there and social distancing all at the same time. Thank you for that one. And I did see a question that just came up in the chat. Someone asked about when does it start again? So it actually has started for our in-person students. We had a few that started today um, and some of most of our in-person students will start Wednesday. For our remote students that are in three through five testing at home, it starts Wednesday the 10th. And then for our students that are going to be coming in person three through five, that also starts on February 10th. And then our primary students can start coming in person on February 16th for testing. So thank you for putting that in the chat for us. And that will all be in the survey too that we'll send out immediately as this presentation ends. So you'll have those in the survey while you're looking at it. We'll be sharing it out on Dojo as well as through um, School Messenger as well. We're just scanning back and forth because we don't want to miss anybody. You guys are an awesome audience with really good questions. So we, we really appreciate that. Um, if you're anything like me, you know, you might go to a presentation or you go to your doctor and then you remember the question you were going to ask about 10 minutes after it's all over. So if you have some questions um, after we finish this presentation, we're just a dojo click away. Mm -hmm. we're, we're on all of your students' class dojos. You can always message Ms. Kazmarek and myself as well as the um, classroom teachers. They're very familiar with this as well too. Um, one of the coolest things that we're able to do is the way that we're, we're monitoring all of this and that we can provide that support. So our teachers are very comfortable with that as we are too. Um, over the years, we've just this has become just a, a natural process and is what we do and for the students as well. So um, one of the things, if, if you are taking it home or the students are taking it at the end of the test, a number will pop up. That's gonna be your child's RIT score. Um, we will be sending reports home after the fact. This is kind of really good timing for us because we'll have parent teacher conferences coming up as well at the beginning of March. So we'll be able to have this information available and ready to share out with our families too for parent teacher conferences. So the more students that we are able to have participate, the more information we can share back with you. Um, we will be sending the link right away. And I know that someone had asked about the practice manual too. That will be right in this presentation. It's at the very end on that resource page. So they're just live links that will bring you right to the NWEA map pages. MAP also has a lot of different things on their website, probably more information than we all care to know, but there's more information there for you to take a look at too, if you're interested.
Okay, well, Ms. Kazmarek and I will stay on the line for a couple minutes. So that way, if anyone has any questions that they'd like to ask in a smaller group, but we so thank you for your time this evening, for joining us, for being part of our parent map presentation and for, for allowing us to record you. So that way you could be famous on our YouTube channel too. So thank you everybody. And we hope that you have a wonderful night. Have a great night.